Thank you for the introduction and also thank you very much for accepting my paper to this very, very interesting conference on women, women in photography. Uh, in my paper, I will discuss the role of women photographers in the history of Swedish uh, photography after World War II and put them in an international contest of feminist artists. The work of three prominent women photographers will be presented, Agneta Ekman, Eva Claesson and Toya Lindström. They were active during a period in Swedish photography that spans from the 1960s via the 1970s into the 1990s. I will elaborate on the different strategies that these photog three photographers have used to explore questions around sexuality, the body and femininity. I've been aware of their uh, work for many years, uh, uh, but in 2014 uh, I had uh, the opportunity uh, to present their photographs in the exhibition A Way of Life, Swedish photography from Christer Strömholm until today. Uh, the exhibition was curated by me for Moderna Museet Malmö uh, in the spring. Malmö is in the south of Sweden. And then it traveled to Moderna Museet in Stockholm uh, in the fall the same year. The exhibition uh, uh, was based on the Moderna Museet collection uh, and included more than 300 photographs by 29 photographers. Christer Strömholm, uh, who died in 2002, uh, has had a seminal influence on Nordic photography. He became interested in photography in the late 1940s. He traveled extensively. And um, uh, in the uh, 1960s, he moved towards street photography uh, from, from a more abstract style uh, to street photography, producing his famous portraits of the transsexuals at Place Blanche in Paris. Between 1962 and 1974, he was responsible for the famous Fotoskolan, the photo school in Stockholm. Uh, his images and methods have inspired generations of photographers. Um, he was talking and teaching very early on photography as a personal artistic means of expression. The legacy of Christer Strömmel has largely been that of the independent often male photographer who travels, exposes himself to life, and who has a secret bohemian existence thanks to his camera. Um, and this is a self-portrait of Christer Strömholm. But of course, there have also been several strong women photographers active in this tradition. Um, and uh, this is a, a few installation views from the exhibition. You can here see Agneta Ekman, uh, again, and Eva Klass on the red uh, photographs in the end. Um, and uh, we have more of her. And to the right, a few images by Tuya Lindström, and you will see more of them soon. Agneta Ekman is the oldest of these three photographers. She's born 1942. Uh, she was in the first class of Christer Strömholm's photo school in the beginning of the 1960s and later also became a teacher at the school. Uh, she published uh, the photo book Talmaya, I have it here, in 1967. Uh, and this is until now her best known project. Talmaya means, uh, Tal means pine and Maya is the name. Um, the series draws inspiration from folk stories she heard as a child, uh, folk stories about forest sirens. Uh, the Huldra is another name for, for this uh, person. Um, the stories about Talmaya is that she was uh, shameless, uh, that she expressed a strong uh, sexuality, uh, that she is seductive and creative a very strong mythical female figure, uh, turns out in this folklore tradition. Um, for this project, she uh, uh, invited three friends and they created these images in a primeval forest um, uh, near a lake in Västergötland in the country of Sweden. Ekman wanted to find the raw and wild in her actors 
uh, and she gave them instructions and worked more like a director in this project. Uh, the images was then created uh, in, uh, in the dark room um, uh, with double exposure and superimposed frames, frames that created a mythical and eerie atmosphere in the photographs. This is in fact uh, an example of uh, very early stage photography and you should remember that this was uh, when the documentary tradition, documentary photography, was st uh, still very, very, very strong in Sweden. Um, but she used her camera, um, the classic black and white photography, to staging something that she thought was important to both men and women. She wanted to give inspiration to, to do something unconventional to liberate yourself through this uh, project. Christer Strömman was, as I said, uh, very important and influential, but Agneta Ekman felt no real connection with him. She had other ideas and felt more like a poet, or she wanted to work more like a poet uh, with her photography. In the beginning of the 1970s, she moved to Norway. Uh, she had children and started to work as a filmmaker and teacher, and she worked like that with that for more than 30 years. But she disappeared from the inner circles of Swedish photography. Uh, she was redis rediscovered a few years ago when her book was published again in a facsimile edition, the one that I have with me. My next uh, example, my next photography is Eva Claesson. She's born in 1947. She became internationally acknowledged in Paris in the mid-1970s on the strength of a series of intimate close-ups of her body. Uh, she had worked shortly uh, at the Hasselblad camera factory when she moved uh, to Paris in 1969 to work as a freelance photographer. Her first series, uh, made in 1976, uh, was called Le Troisième Angle, the third angle, and, alludes, and the title alludes to the three levels of conditions she thought to express in her images. The first was the physical condition, the second the mental psychological, and the third angle was that of the camera lens. And below the photograph, uh, she placed, you can see, she placed a rice paper with drawings and words. Uh, the words were written by herself in Swedish and French. Uh, and they were mounted by the photographer herself, uh, like this that you see in the images, um, in my slides. Um, she mounted them on black, silver, or white colored paper. In her project, uh, she is both behind and in front of the camera, and she created them at home in her small studio in Paris, using a camera and extension tubes and flash to take these extreme close-ups of her breasts, shoulders, neck, hands, mouth, eyes, hair, <laughs> and sex. She has explained that, uh, that the project is about the body, but not the outside, how it looks like, uh, um, it's how the body is felt from the inside. She wants us to have a physical experience looking at her photographs. Um, through the almost abstract images, the beholder shall discover the body and its erotic zones, erotic zones in a new and expected ways. Um, her images expresses emotions through words and uh, pictures. Um, uh, and her method is close to body art and performance. The performative act is present even though the audience remains absent. The photographs uh, by Eva Klasson were compiled in an artist book published in 1976 by Birth Edition in Paris. Uh, it was a very exclusive uh, edition uh, with a slip 
case with black for fur inside. And uh, the uh, rice paper was put between the photographs. And you can see that the, the, uh, the drawing following the forms, follows the forms of the image uh, of the body. And here's the same image as a um, more photograph. Um, she created uh, further two series uh, that explore various emotional states. In 1977, she made uh, a project she called Ambilique with airbrush paintings under the photograph. Um, Ambilique means navel in French, and the project is on digestion. And then the year after, uh, she made uh, a third uh, project called Parasite uh, with a dead animal body uh, under, um, together with uh, images of her body, her own body. It's a rabbit that she's using. And this project is uh, about pain. Around 1980, she gave up photography and moved to the US and was entering a religious community. In interviews, she has been very open with that she had to make a change of life uh, because of personal problems and a drug addiction. So she, she really disappeared and changed her name and so on. Her work uh, is uh, rediscovered um, in 2001 in an exhibition uh, at an art museum uh, in Sweden uh, an exhibition on artist books, and her book, Le Troisième Angle, was included in this exhibition. She's now uh, included in the Monada Museet collection and also other collections, um, and she's also represented by a gallery who, who take care of her, of her work. Um, the reception of her work and position during these past 15 years has been very interesting, I think. Um, in one of the latest studies on the history of Swedish photography, her life and body of work is mentioned, but the focus uh, is more on that Eva Klasson was not a part of Swedish photography in the 1970s, and that recent group and Sule exhibitions where her photographs uh, have been included have a tendency to trying to rewrite or change the history afterwards. In other words, these recent exhibitions make her work more, more important uh, than they were, maybe too important. And according to this writer, the photographs by Eva Klassen was in the 1970s an anomaly. And now I come to my um, third and last example, the photographer Toya Lindström. Uh, she's born 1950. Uh, she began working with photography fee after moving from Finland to, to Sweden in the 1970s. She finished her studies at Konstfack, the University College of Arts, Crafts and Design in Stockholm in 1984, where she had started working with large format cameras and uh, advanced darkroom techniques. Um, in the 1980s, she uh, became um, well known for a series of intimate portraits of friends and cultural uh, figures. And I will show you a short, um, a small collection of her uh, work. Uh, this is uh, Auliki, and here you can have Pia. So all the photographs have the name of the model. Uh, this is Jonas and Jussi, um, and to the left you can see um, Jonas Gadell. He is uh, today a very famous author in, in Sweden. Anne-Marie, Mia. And in all these portraits and other projects like this, the hand, um, she's investigating the male gaze or examining the male gaze, you can say. In 1991, uh, she she worked on her conceptual series Kvinnorna vid Tjursjön, or The Girls at Bull, Bull's Pond. Um, 
portraits of women fluking in dark water are juxtaposed with monumental images of domestic irons, creating a tension between the soft bodies and the hard irons. And this is still, I think, one of our strongest um, uh, series. Um, Toya Lindström became professor at the School of Photography and Film in Gothen at Gothenburg University in 1992. And she uh, stayed for 10 years. And during her time, the curriculum was re reoriented towards a more theoretical and artistic direction. It had a more feminist focus, you can say. Um, and actually this... Um, uh, choice was very controversial. Many uh, photographers, especially uh, a group of press photographers, was very upset of this election uh, to give her this position. But um, uh, Toya Lindström had, had a great impact on young, young artists and photographers, especially for many young women photographers in Sweden and in the other Nordic countries. Okay, it's time for a conclusion now. Um, this is, uh, again, an installation view from the Moderna Museet. Um, uh, accept, uh, actually, the installation we have uh, right now, and to the left you can see uh, a few of these uh, uh, photographs by, uh, by Thuel Lindström, um, uh, and also another series from London and Wales that she made uh, uh, in 1982. These three photographers have been included very late in the history of Swedish photography. Their photographs have been considered as different, unusual, not representative. But if you go outside the photographic tradition and instead compare them or compare their work with artists like Valley Export from Austria, Esther Ferrer from Spain, Anna Mandieta from Cuba, Eva Partum from Poland, Penny Slinger from the UK, Hannah Wilke and Martha Wilson from the US, just to mention a few. You can include them in a feminist, in a group of feminist artists instead. Many of these artists, and I'm, I'm sure you, you, you know about their work, and also Liz Wells men mentioned uh, um, some of these, the feminist uh, artists. Um, they began their higher education at art school with traditional training in painting, but later turned to photography, film, video, and performance, medias that they thought were more liberating and open to experiments. In the 1970s, female artists were able to deconstruct the image of, of women that had for a long time charged, been charged with traditional projections and stereotypes. They used slogans from the feminist movement and discussed issues concerning women, pregnancy, childbirth, motherhood, sexuality, partnership, I ideas of beauty, the female body, etc. Agneta Ekman, Eva Claesson and Thuja Lindström, they have never described themselves as feminist artists. But Agneta Ekman has in later interviews expressed that she had problems with the male networks. Uh, she felt very excluded and she wanted to do something about it, even if she never talked about feminism during the time she was active. Eva Klasson, um, she has talked more about her spiritual development, um, but this journey uh, has been very <coughs> closely connected to her role as a female artist. Toya Lindström has been very well aware of feminist theories and she has also worked together with a few well-known feminist scholars. <coughs> Looking at uh, their photographs in, the tra in, the tradition, uh, and to in this tradition and to make analyses with feminist theories will open up to new interesting interpretations and really put them in an international context. The title of my paper was Agneta Ekman, Eva Klaasson and Toya Lindström, Three Photographers, Three Strategies. A more accurate title would have been 
Agneta Ekman, Eva Klasson and Tuell Lindström, three Swedish photographers using different feminist strategies in their work on sexuality, the body and femininity. Thank you.